I was driven in life by my hopeless desire for a romance that felt like the movies, a dreamy soundtrack and a chance encounter with a gorgeous human who would sweep me off my feet. Every step through life was dictated by this fantasy, so I couldn't imagine any other mode of transportation for my trip to my sister's house in Florida than a train heading south. I longingly looked out the window of the cafe car where I had sat down to write. I noticed two captivating men nestled in a table nearby. I saw a beautiful camera that one man paid attention to. His fingers, deft and agile, moved over the camera with a familiarity that spoke of years of passion and dedication to his craft. This creative cameraman held a magnetic charm that ignited a spark within me. His dark, tousled hair and piercing eyes and a handmade brown fedora was the embodiment of artistic allure. <laughs> Unable to resist the possibility of fate, I mustered the courage to inquire about their destination. Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm heading to Florida. Where are you all going? The tall, dark, and handsome man looked up, his eyes meeting mine with an intensity that made my heart skip a beat. I'm Gio, he said, his voice smooth and warm. We're heading to South Georgia. I lightly giggled. <laughs> of course his name was Gio, how interesting. <laughs> when the other man introduced himself, I forgot his name immediately. <laughs> As the ride unfolded, we talked about where we were from and what was happening in our lives. In my bag, I retrieved my grandfather's Kodak camera from the 1950s to deepen our connection. With every word, he seemed more like the perfect, main, leading man in the romantic story I had always dreamed of living. Thankfully, Gio's friend passed out drunk in the booth. Gio extended a warm invitation to let his friend rest and to watch the sunset from their seats in the train car. I followed close behind, realizing that this beautiful man stood a whole foot taller than me. Oh gosh, I thought, someone to reach the top shelf in our future cottage in the woods. <laughs> As the sun gracefully set, casting the world into a velvety embrace of darkness, the atmosphere between Gio and me shifted. In a playful gesture, Gio took his bespoke hat from his head and placed it atop my hand, his hand stacked with mine, a shared secret between us. <laughs> I couldn't believe this moment was unfolding exactly as I had envisioned it. I could see it playing out on the Hallmark Channel. Snapshot of love, a ticket to romance, hearts in frame, picture perfect journey, or hats off to love. <laughs> As the enchantment of the night continued, I succumbed to the hypnotic sway of the train and found sanctuary on Gio's shoulder. But I awoke with Gio stirring to prepare to exit the train. Our farewell carried the promise of a love story suspended in the realm of what ifs and maybes, leaving the train platform adorned with the untold chapters of a brief but unforgettable encounter. Days dragged beneath the relentless Florida sun at my sister's house, each moment overshadowed by the persistent echoes of what might have been between Gio and me. Every meal started with me valiantly not trying to bring up Gio and ended with my sister rolling her eyes so hard I thought they might get stuck. As the week drew to a close, I wondered, what were the odds that fate might bring Gio and I back together on the ride home? With this thought, I bid farewell to my sister who looked more relieved than sad carrying with me the hopeful anticipation that des Destiny's mysterious hand might guide me back to Geo. But after waiting many stops in the cafe car, hoping the universe would work its magic, I lost hope of being reunited with Geo. He never got back on the train, so I desperately wanted to believe that the universe had another plan, preferably one that didn't involve me starring in my own tragic rom-com. I needed my romantic film ending and I was ready to do anything to make that happen. A chance encounter occurred as the train door opened to a man who carried a guitar case and exuded the carefree essence of a skater boy, which might have been charming if I were still 15. His stature was modest, his demeanor basic, and he looked like he got dressed at a 90s beach souvenir clearance sale. He was worlds away from fitting into my romantic film vibes, not the kind of leading man I had dreamed of, more like a background extra in someone else's coming of age story. <laughs> Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm going to North Carolina, where are you heading? Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a wandering Renaissance man, <laughs> he said, strumming his guitar. I eyed his white shutter shades skeptically. This guy probably thought that the Renaissance was a new clothing line at Target. <laughs> I don't have a place to call home right now, so I'm going where the road takes me he said, 
his voice carrying a poetic undertone that intrigued me despite my better judgment. As we tra uh, chatted through the bumpy ride, he played Wonderwall four times, <laughs> which was impressive only because it somehow got worse each time. But in a moment of spontaneity or sheer desperation, our lips met in a kiss. This kiss, while physically intimate, failed to ignite the emotional spark I yearned for, the one I so desperately wanted with Gio. Chris, though not the embodiment of my desires, offered a temporary solace for my craving heart. With the knowledge that my roommates were gone for the summer, I made an impulsive decision to invite him to stay with me for the summer. I'm not sure what I imagined would ensue, but I wanted to see how the story would write itself. Plus, like, how bad could it be? I mean, aside from having a skater boy renaissance wannabe crash on my couch. But at this point in my desperate de desire for romance, anybody would do. Almost immediately as we returned to my apartment, the weight of my impulsive decision bore down on me with an ever intensifying force. The gravity of my mistake became painfully evident as he sprawled across my bed with bare, stinky feet asking for a snuggle. <sighs> Panic set in as I questioned my sanity for letting a virtual stranger invade my room, my bed, my life. The mere thought of having such intimacy with him made me cringe with regret. Chris, though, had a relentless enthusiasm and dreams of a shared future where we might live out of a refurbished van and sell homemade hemp bracelets at music festivals. <laughs> he eagerly searched for, a car, uh, searched for a job and borrowed my car, hugging me goodbye every morning. I was mortified. Days turned into a week, and I couldn't bear another cringeworthy moment where he called me pookie, sweet cheeks, or pumpkin pants one more time. <laughs> Though I'd given into a few kisses, my gut churned with the realization that I had made the worst mistake of my life. Desperate, I turned <laughs> to Scott, my classmate and close friend from the theater department. Scott was the kind of guy who'd show up late to class wearing ripped pajamas, saying he had to fend off a raccoon. He once stood outside my window with a boombox on his shoulder, playing Death Cab for Cutie to cheer me up. On a whim, I even let him cut my hair, and he did a good job. <laughs> Scott could turn any mundane moment into a wild adventure. Despite his occasional antics and what I suspected might have been a crush on me, we were always just friends. Hesitantly, though, I unraveled my shameful predicament to Scott, and he helped me craft a plan to get me out of this mess. I set the stage for Chris to arrive home to a dinner, complete with seductive undertones Scott and I had concocted. Chris fell for it, devouring the seduction along with the roasted asparagus while I squirmed in discomfort. Scott, who was a skinny, pale, blonde-haired 20-year-old boy, began vehemently banging on the door. He burst in like he owned the place, strutting with an air of confidence. His slick back hair and an ill-fitted black pinstripe suit clothed his frame while a shiny silver necklace glinted around his neck. I reluctantly let Scott in as he practically shoved the door against me. Stephanie, you haven't recurred my calls in a week. I knew something was up. <laughs> Who is this dude? He's been spending time with you. He owes me. Scott pointed an accusatory finger at Chris. You've been hanging with my girl for a week. You owe me at least $5,000. <laughs> Scott continued. Chris looked at me, first with a protective look, but I just smiled, shrugging my shoulders. Chris whimpered, is this for real? What's, what's going on? Scott exploded, oh, this is real, and it's as real as it gets, and you owe me. Chris uttered, um, I don't have any of that money. I can get a job tomorrow. Hopefully, I'll figure out how to pay you. Scott shouted dramatically and grabbed my arm. Oh, no, you need to pay me now. Scott and I paraded our charade into my bedroom, slammed the door, and began shouting about the fake possibilities that could have ensued. We fake slaps and yelled curse words, all the while laughing under our breath. We couldn't believe this was working. After what felt like an eternity, we returned to Chris, still in character and playing up the melodrama for all it was worth. Chris, visibly squirming, looking more desperate than a contestant on a game show with no lifelines left, pleaded for a way out, practically begging to be, to be released from our antics. He even dropped to his knees in a dramatic gesture that would make Shakespeare proud or cringe in disbelief. I managed to wrangle Scott into releasing him by promising absurd behaviors in return. In a whirlwind of relief and conf confusion, Chris bolted, gathering his stuff and vanishing into the night. Scott and I burst out into laughter and tears as soon as Chris left, hugging each other and then sat down to eat dinner. We couldn't believe we did it. The echoes of that orchestrated drama 
still exist in my body. <laughs> and while I would never make a choice like I once did, you can still find me nestled in the corner of a cozy cafe, sipping a hot tea, slightly swaying to the music, still hoping someone with a beautiful camera is there when I look up from my book. <laughs> and despite the wild adventures and crazy schemes, Scott and I, we were always just friends, partners in crime, but never anything more. The friend never became the lover, no matter how many rom-coms we tried to play out. Thank you. <laughs> Make some noise again for Vamp. First timer, Stephanie Rick. Stephanie is a writer, a teacher, a performer, and a mama. You can follow her on Instagram at Wildflowered. That's two R's at the end.